Exodus chapter 30. Exodus chapter 30, beginning in verse 22. It says, Moreover, the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Also take for yourself quality spices. Some Bible translations say principal spices or the best spices. And then he lists five different kinds. And then in verse 24, he gives the quantity of how much. He says that you are to take a hin of olive oil, that is six quarts of olive oil, and put five ingredients into it, and it will become the anointing oil. Verse 29, you shall consecrate them that they may be holy. Whatever touches them must be holy. And you shall anoint Aaron and his sons and consecrate them. Jump down to verse 31. And you shall speak to the children of Israel saying, listen, you may think that this was for them back then and there, but it says, this shall be a holy anointing oil to me. That's God speaking throughout your generations. In other words, I want you to do this from generation to generation. Verse 32, it shall not be poured out on man's flesh, nor shall you make any other like it. In other words, I don't want it substituted. I want it to be the real thing. According to its composition, it is holy and it shall be holy to you. Whoever compounds any like it or whoever puts any of it on an outsider, some translations say a stranger shall be cut off from his people. I'm preaching on the topic this morning, the anointing makes the difference. Yeah. The anointing makes the difference. How many of you know that there is a difference between singing and anointed singing? Yeah. There is a difference between preaching and anointed preaching. Yeah. There is a difference between having church and having an anointed church service because the anointing makes a difference. And I believe that it will make the difference in your life. And be before we begin, let's just ask God's blessing on the service this morning. Heavenly Father, we come to you, Lord, in the precious name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I ask that you would anoint me this morning to minister to your people, not only those here, but those watching by live stream, Lord, that this word would bring life to every person that hears it this morning, that the anointing of the Holy Spirit would come upon each and every one of them. And Lord, we thank you for it. in Jesus mighty name we pray and everybody said amen and amen. The anointing makes the difference. You know, we often think that the anointing is just for people in ministry, but if you're a business person this morning, the anointing makes a difference in the marketplace. The anointing will make your gift and call of God upon your life to become powerful and fruitful. What makes us effective is the anointing. First John chapter 2 and verse 20, it says, but you have an unction from the Holy One. Other translations say that you have an anointing, that you have an unction that you have received of Him, and that anointing it abides within you. When the anointing is upon someone, there is an unction behind you. I like to say it is an unction to function. And there's something about the anointing that gives you the unction. It quickens you. It causes you to have the ability to do something. It graces you. He says you are to take a hint of oil, which is six quarts of oil. And when they would anoint in the Bible days, they would pour six quarts of oil of anointing, uh, of anointing oil. Aren't you thankful that we don't do that here? Pour six quarts of anointing oil on you. And so it wasn't just a little mercy drop from heaven. It wasn't just a little dab will do you. It wasn't just a little smear and maybe put a dot on the head and put a little cross with some oil. But they poured six quarts of oil. Now read Psalms chapter 133. Uh, it says, the Bible says that the oil flowed down from Aaron's hair, down past his beard, onto his garment, and down to his feet. And so he was drenched in the anointing. And I believe that there a need today and in the church for that kind of anointing. We don't need little mercy drops. We are not fighting smaller things. We're fighting bigger things than we ever fought before. And there's an anointing that the Bible talks about in Joel that said in the Lord in the last days, I will pour out my spirit. Oh. 
In other words, I'm not just going to touch your life or momentarily bless you. I want there to be a saturation of the anointing. I want you to be drenched in the anointing. I want you to have an anointing upon your life. It's not just for preachers and prophets. It's for every one of you. And he said, you can be anointed. He said, you are to take these five spices. And you are to crush them because the anointing comes out of crushing. The anointing comes out of breaking. The anointing comes out of that which is pounded. And it's been through something. And some of you out there, when you go through something, you quit halfway through. But you have to hold on. Because when you come out, you will come out with something in your hand. And that's called the anointing that God will use to help other people get free. And I love the fact that he said that these are principal spices. That these are quality spices. You know, there's something about the anointing when it comes on you. It'll bring the best out of you. That's what the anointing does. It takes the gifts and the abilities that you have. You can have them in you, but they're lying dormant. But when God freshly anoints you, whatever he put in you, he'll bring the best out of you. The anointing, it brings the best worship out of you. The anointing brings the best ability and gifting that you have. Whatever it is that you've been gifted to do, it needs the anointing on it. And when the anointing is on you, the principle, the quality, quality, or the best spices, God deserves our best, and he wants the best out of you. And I love the fact that he said, when you anoint, you are to have fresh oil. Listen to this verse in Psalm chapter 92. And verse 10, it says, I shall be anointed with fresh oil. You know, there's a lot of people in the church today who are stale in their anointing. They're stale in what God is doing in their life because it's an old anointing. It was something that happened way back there on some service a long time ago. And that's why the Bible talks about that there are flies in the ointment. There's a verse that actually says that if you don't have fresh oil, that flies are attracted to that anointing, that ointment that you have in you. And we have to have a fresh anointing from the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. You know, I love the fact that we don't have to be repulsive. You know, there's an old smell of religion that gets on people sometimes. And we're just doing church. And the old machine, it cranks on, and it's just another Sunday, and it's just another church, and it's just another singing, and it's just another preaching, it's just another sermon. But when the freshness of the anointing comes, when the touch of the anointing comes, when the power of the Holy Spirit comes, there's a freshness to it, there's a quickening to it, and there's an anointing on it. Hallelujah. And I love that he said that the anointing can do what other things cannot do. When the anointing is there, it begins to permeate the atmosphere. When the woman broke open the alabaster box and anointed Jesus' feet, the aroma of that anointing, it permeated the atmosphere. There's something about the anointing when it fills a room. There is an odor of the anointing, and I don't mean a physical smell, but spiritually speaking, the atmosphere, the aroma of the anointing when it fills. When somebody gets up and sings a song, the atmosphere changes. When a word is anointed, it begins to change the atmosphere. There's a sweetness there. Psalm 72 and verse 6, it says this, that he shall come down like rain. I mowed down fresh grass. Have you ever walked outside after it rained and the grass had just been cut and there's just this aroma in the air? That's what the anointing is like. When it comes, you can smell the rose of Sharon. You can smell the lily of the valley. There's a sweetness. There's something about it. There's something that comes on us when we sense and feel the anointing. We need the anointing on our life. And it's not just that we have to go around saying, I'm anointed, I'm anointed, look at me. But when you leave this sanctuary today, God can so anoint us that when you go back on the job, when your kids go into school, they don't know what to call it, but they say there's something about you. There's something 
something unusual about you? What is it about you? Do you do yoga? There's a peace about you. There's a peace on your life. You have a contentment about you. You have an authority about you. It's called the anointing. Hallelujah. And I'm thankful that it's available to us today. The anointing. Can you give God a hand clap of praise? Hallelujah. He said in verse 32 that the anointing, don't you know that there is a difference when you get into an anointed church service? Moses, he got anointed and he had to put a veil over his face because he was shining with the glory of God. Stephen got so anointed that the Bible said that when he stood up to preach, they couldn't resist the spirit by which he spoke because his face was lit up like an angel. You know, a lot of people are getting lit in the church today, but we need to get lit up by the power of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Clap your hands and thank God. The anointing, it makes a difference. Hallelujah. Come on and praise him right there. The anointing, it makes a difference. Hallelujah. You're not fighting your battles In your own strength, the anointing, it makes the difference on your prayers, on your praise, on your spirit, and in your house. Now notice the qualifications. He said in verse 32, upon man's flesh shall it not be poured. What's that all about? Romans chapter 8 says that they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. To be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life. And then it ends by saying that they that are after the flesh cannot please God. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 3, it says, Having begun in the spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? And you know, there's a lot of people that are listening to me today that started in the spirit, but now you're just doing your stuff in the flesh. Maybe when you started that ministry, when you started that business, you started that career and you were connected to that anointing, you were connected to the spirit, but now you have gone so far that you're now leaning on the arms of the flesh. The scripture says, cursed is a man who leans to the arm of the flesh. Isaiah chapter 30 said, woe unto you whose covering is the covering of flesh and not my spirit. Woe unto you who trust in horses and not my spirit. John chapter 6 and verse 63 says that the flesh, it profits nothing. It is the spirit that quickens you. When the anointing of God comes upon you, there's more to it than just flesh. There's more to it than just human ability. There is an added dimension that comes called the anointing. And when the anointing comes, when that ability comes upon your life, it enables you. It quickens you. The flesh, it profits you nothing. It is the spirit that quickens you. It's called the anointing. You know, I love the story the Bible said in 1 Samuel chapter 16. That when Samuel was told by God, stop mourning over Saul. I'm going to anoint a new king. He said, go down to Jesse's house. Go down to Jesse's house. Take a bottle of oil. Take six quarts of oil and go anoint somebody. One of his sons. I'll show you who he is. And he goes down to Jesse's house. And the Bible said that they brought in seven of the boys and left one of them out in the field named David. And the scripture said that Samuel, when he saw Eliab in verse 6, Eliab, he had a stature. He had a look to him that he was presidential. He had something about him that anybody looking at him, even the scripture said this about him, that Samuel's personal preference was, surely the Lord will anoint him. But this is the prophet, yet he's going by what he can see. And that's where the famous verse comes in. God's spirit quickened him and said, don't pour the oil on him because he looks like it. And he's waiting on a promotion for man looks at the outward appearance, but God sees a heart and that's not the one. And he starts to pour the oil and the Holy Spirit says, don't put the oil on him. You know, they brought in seven sons. And Samuel doesn't pour oil on any of them. Now, if that was me, I would have felt bad. I would have at least given them a little dab of oil or something. But God said, I won't anoint this. I don't know what this is, but I'm not going to put my anointing on it. It looks good on the outside, but the heart isn't pure. The heart isn't right. The heart isn't clean. God looks at the heart. Will you give God a shout of praise? 
he said, is there not anybody, in your, anybody else in your house, David? And Jesse says, well, I do have the other boy, but I don't think he's going to amount to anything. He's out in the field. What was he out in the field doing? What was David doing? He was out in the field singing songs, out in the field playing the harp jotting down psalms worshiping god when nobody's looking maybe he is writing psalms chapter 23 the lord is my shepherd i shall not want he makes me a lie down in green pastures he leads me beside the still waters he restores my soul he leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil for you are with me your rod and your staff they comfort me you prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies you anoint my head with oil and all of a sudden, he hears, David, David, are you out there? And he says, I'll be right there, but I'm practicing my slingshot. I can see him out there practicing day after day after day. He's saying, I know it's not much. I know it doesn't look like much, but one day God's going to use this. One day God's going to raise me up. One day I'm going to be a giant killer. And I know right now it's just a rag and a rock and nobody thinks there's much to it. But one day God's and he's practicing and he's practicing. And sure enough, he calls him in. And when Samuel sees him, he gets quick and he pours the oil on him and says you're going to be the next king of Israel and the Bible said that the anointing came on David from that day forward hallelujah there's something powerful that can happen wouldn't you love to leave this service today and say from that day forward I never fight without the anointing you know I love the fact that when Saul said hey if you're going to go fight and take that giant on then take my brass shield and take my armor and take my sword and all that and David said no thank you I'll take the little slingshot and these little five rocks that I've got because I've got the anointing on it and I'd rather have the anointing on a little than a whole lot without the anointing and you might not have the ability somebody else has you might not have the gifting that somebody else has but if you'll just say God here's what I've got here's my ability here's my gift it's not as great as somebody else but here I am I present it to you would you anoint it and would you use it you would be amazed there is no giant that you face that will not fall and when you come at him in the name of the Lord with the anointing it's the anointing that makes a difference and that giant it will fall hallelujah clap your hands and praise the Lord hallelujah there's a difference when the anointing comes there's a freedom when the anointing comes there's an unction when the anointing comes Man may be mad and crossing their arms and sucking their teeth, but they'll be looking crazy in a minute when the anointing comes on you because they can't stop you when you're anointed. They can't hold you down when you're anointed. The devil is afraid of you when you're anointed. Somebody raise your hands and say, Lord, anoint me with fresh oil this day. Lord, I need a fresh touch from you. I need fresh oil in my lamp this morning, not stale oil, fresh Fresh oil, hallelujah. We need a fresh anointing. He said, I'm going to anoint him in the midst of his brothers. And David was anointed. You see, we lean oftentimes on things other than the anointing. But he said, it shall not be poured upon strangers. You know, if you stay distant and far from God, don't expect the anointing. This is for chosen vessels. The anointing is a witness of the Holy Spirit of a sanctified life. He said in Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 8, he said, let their garments always be white. Let their head lack no oil. He said, I want you to have white garments. Speaking of purity, because you're separated, because you're consecrated, because you're sanctified, because you have white garments, that you will have anointed heads. We've come to a time in this generation where the word sanctification, it makes people gag. When you talk about sanctification, people don't want to hear it. They don't want to have anything to do with being separate. They don't want to have anything to do with being different from the world. 
But one thing that the anointing is attracted to is a person who is sanctified, set apart, consecrated, says my life is for Jesus Christ. I don't want it. what everybody else can do. If it's going to hinder my anointing, I don't need it. I don't want it. It's not enough for me. I want the anointing more than anything. Come on, somebody, and give God a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Not upon a stranger. The anointing, it makes the difference. Nahab and Abihu, they tried to do something that they weren't anointed to do, and they were destroyed with fire. The Bible says that Saul tried to offer sacrifices to God like the priests would do who were anointed. And the scripture says that God tells him, because of this thing, I'm taking the kingdom from you and I'm giving it to another because the anointing makes a difference. And don't you dare try to do in the flesh what I can only anoint to do by my spirit. And lean in and listen carefully this morning, he said, and there will be a great penalty for anyone who tries to substitute the ingredients that I said had to be and the anointing. He said, don't substitute. Did you read that verse? He said, you shall not, you shall not make another one like it and pretend that it's a real thing. I don't want substitutes. You know, we are living in an hour of substitutes in the body of Christ. And we think that we can substitute the anointing of the Holy Spirit for other things when there is nothing that will get the job done like the anointing. You know, in 2 Chronicles chapter 12, the Bible said that Rehoboam, when he had gold shields, that they were stolen, 300 of them. And he put them outside the temple and the Bible said that when they got stolen because they had backslidden and the enemies came and stole them and he was afraid of the morale of what would happen to the people. And so he commanded that they bring brass shields and then they put guards out there so that the people couldn't get too close to inspect and then he said i want you to polish up the brass shields real good so that when the sun hits them from a distance they'll still think it's the gold but it's really brass and i wonder how much of the, of what we have in the church is brass shields and we're just trying our best to imitate the real thing which is the anointing of the holy spirit But there's no imitation that can compare to the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, for the spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, and to set at liberty them that are bruised. Acts chapter 10 said that God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost, and he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. You see, when you get anointed, you'll go about. When you get anointed, God will open doors for you. When you get anointed, they can't hold you down. You'll go about. You'll get the anointing on you, and the anointing will make things happen that you could never make happen. And God wants to anoint every single person under the sound of my voice here this morning. As I get ready to close here this morning, I heard a story of a pastor down in Birmingham, Alabama. This happened several year, This happened many years ago. His daughter was 14 years old and she got in the car with a 16 year old and they were just going to run down the road and get something to eat and come back and they got in the car and something happened to the car and it broke down on the side of the road in the middle of the night and a stranger pulled up and got out of the car forced the girls into the car put the pastor's daughter in the back seat and the other girl in the front seat and then sped away. And he started cursing. He started saying mean things, hateful things to them. And and the pastor's daughter noticed that over in a box was a knife, was tape, and was ropes. And she began to tremble. And she said, Daddy, she said, the Holy Spirit came upon me. And I began to pray in the Holy Spirit as the anointing came on me. And that girl began to pray in the Holy Ghost and began to pray under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. She said that man that was driving that car that was taking them off to do only God knows what he was going to do to them. And he said, what's wrong with her? What's wrong with her? And the girl next to him said, that's the Holy Ghost. That's the anointing of the Holy Spirit. He said, what's wrong with you? And then she started praying in the Holy Spirit as well. And the man started saying, well, I can't stand this. Pulled the car over and said, get out of my car. I ain't got... I believe that in the anointing, I believe that no weapon formed against us shall prosper when we are anointing. We've got to have a fresh anointing. We need the anointing.
in our schools. We need the anointing in our churches. And we need the anointing on our lives. Stand to your feet here this morning and say the anointing. It makes the difference. Singers and musicians and come back this morning. Hallelujah.